It's called the Silk Road. Silk Road. A billion dollar online marketplace for the elusive ringleader known, known as, as the Dread Pirate Roberts. Who is the Dread Pirate Robert? Um, I'm going to need you to ride the horsey. Okay. All the way to the TV. Is that a whole set? I don't know. I think it is. I Hi, think I'm Willie, the you did a good job. Once upon a time, in the depths of the digital world, a man named Ross Albrecht had a vision that would change the course of history. He dreamed of creating a marketplace where people could exchange goods and services freely and anonymously. Little did he know that this vision would lead him down a treacherous path, ultimately entwining him with a notorious black market known as the Silk Road. Pretty sure I want to start a family in the next five years, make make more friends and close people I love. I want to focus on uh, being more connected to people. Ross Albrecht was born on March 27, 1984, in Austin, Texas. He grew up in a close-knit family, known for their libertarian values. From a young age, Albrecht displayed exceptional intelligence and a strong interest in technology. After graduating from the University of Texas with a bachelor's degree in physics, he pursued a master's degree in material science and engineering at Penn State University. It was during this time that he became deeply interested in libertarian philosophies and decentralized technologies which would shape his future endeavors. Ross was a child of the digital age, a tech-savvy individual who saw the potential of the internet as a tool for empowerment and freedom. He believed in the power of decentralization, where individuals could exercise their right to privacy and engage in voluntary transactions without interference from governments or third parties. Ross was captivated by the idea of a truly free market, one where people could buy and sell anything they desired without restrictions. 
and with his deep understanding of cryptography and computer programming, Ross set out to turn his dream into reality. However, even with his extensive knowledge, he decided to reach in one of the Bitcoin community forums and ask for help. Under the alias Altoid, he wrote, I'm looking for best and brightest IT pro in the Bitcoin community to be the lead developer in a venture-backed Bitcoin company. Experience in a startup environment is a plus for just being super hardworking, self-motivated and creative. Compensation can be in the form of equity or a salary or something in between. And if anyone is interested, he or she should contact him via rossalbrecht at gmail.com. And making his email address public would come back to haunt him for the rest of his life. In January 2011, Albrecht, under the pseudonym Dread Pirate Roberts, launched the Silk Road. He named it after the ancient trading route that connected Asia with the Mediterranean and European world. But instead of being the place that served goods such as silk, spices, precious metals, minerals, architecture and painting, it served something else. Inspired by his libertarian beliefs and the potential of the burgeoning cryptocurrency Bitcoin, Albrecht envisioned a marketplace that would operate outside of the control of governments and traditional financial institutions. The Silk Road was created, accessible only through the Tor network, which was primarily developed by the US Navy to communicate anonymously over the internet, allowed users to engage in anonymous transactions using Bitcoin, thus providing an avenue for the sale of illegal substances, counterfeit documents, hacking tools, and much more. In an effort to promote his newly built marketplace, Albrecht reached out online once more. Pretending to be a user, he wrote, I came across this website called Silk Road. It's a Tor hidden service that claims to allow you to buy and sell anything online. He left a link to the site and asked for an opinion. And not long after, the buyers started showing up. The Silk Road quickly gained traction within the dark web ecosystem due to its well-designed user interface, strong security measures and the perception of anonymity, the thing that was offered to both buyers and sellers. The market employed an escrow system, assuring that transactions were completed satisfactorily before releasing funds to the seller. User reviews played a crucial role in maintaining trust and quality control, allowing participants to provide feedback and rate their experiences. With his network expanding more and more each day, he ultimately had to seek help from Richard Bates, who was his undergrad buddy, and to keep secrets away, he told everything to his current girlfriend at a time, Julia V. While the Silk Road's initial premise centered on libertarian ideals and harm reduction, it soon became apparent that it was facilitating a vast of thriving underground drug trade. Literally thousands of listings for narcotics such as cocaine, heroin, MDMA and prescription drugs flooded the marketplace, making it go-to destination for buyers seeking illegal substances. Ross believed that whatever anybody wants to put in their body is their choice and their choice only, and in this way they could do it safely, not worrying about being shot, kidnapped or stabbed. And the best part is, all from the comfort of your home. The whole system literally functioned like Amazon today. The seller would receive ratings of customers, and if so happens that he sold bad drugs or merch that is of low quality, it would hurt his business. The package would arrive the front of the home door, wrapped just like any ordinary package and with printed mailing labels to make it look like they came from a legitimate business. But that ultimately backfired since they drew the attention of authorities. However, the Silk Road also attracted other criminal activities, including money laundering, firearms trading, counterfeit currencies, hacking services and even contract killings, which later became a significant factor in Ulbricht's downfall. As the Silk Road gained prominence, its influence extended beyond the dark web. Holbrook actively promoted the platform through various means, including commissioning an e-book titled 
the underground website where you can buy any drug imaginable. The Silk Road's reputation and the media attention it received drew in users from around the world, with estimated sales reaching tens of millions of dollars annually. Olberg's ingenuity and entrepreneurial spirit led to the development of advanced features such as the Silk Road Forum, providing a space for buyers and sellers to discuss and exchange information, further cementing the marketplace position as a hub for illegal activities. The forum also fostered a sense of community along Silk Road participants, allowing them to share knowledge and strategies related to drug use and distribution. Everything ran like a clockwork. However, it will all come crashing when in the summer of 2011, a Homeland Security agent, Jerry Deryagian, came across in possession of a small package going through Chicago International Airport. It contained a single pill of ecstasy, which was very strange since they were usually shipped in bulk. That prompted him to follow the trace and soon came familiar with the name Silk Road. Soon, Ross Albrecht's creation was put on the map of the US government. Due to all the eyes pointed at him, Richard Bates urged him to shut it all down, and his girlfriend left him because he couldn't carry his insanely large secret on her back. As he got the green light, Agent Derry again started his adventure pretending to be one of the regular buyers and purchased over 50 packages of the course of two years. But his biggest break came when he was able to track down and arrest one of Albrecht's mods by the name of Cyrus. He soon took over the account, which gave him the direct access to Ross himself. But there was still a long way to go to be actually determined who the Dread Pirate Roberts is. They needed to wait for a mistake. And that mistake eventually came. After a couple of internal coding errors, they managed to find out that the main servers of Silk Road were housed on Iceland, and soon after the FBI got involved, they received all the necessary information. Number of transactions, leaked IP addresses, who logged in, who logged out, and most importantly the name of the main computer to which all the servers talked to. But still, there was no trace of who Dread Pirate Roberts actually is. They could only see login history, and one in particular pointed to a cafe in San Francisco via VPN, so they narrowed the search. And the real breakthrough came in. But not from the FBI or Homeland Security, but from Internal Revenue Service, also known as the IRS. A tax investigator, Gary Alford, was assigned to follow the money, but he ultimately discovered who stands behind the biggest illegal marketplace in online history. Gary figured that whoever started the whole thing must have, have left some trace even before it all began. So he started searching through Google and soon after he stumbled upon Albrecht's online posts. What stood out was the username Altoid which was used on several other forums associated with the mentioning of the Silk Road, including the one in which he left his email address. There were also questions about the Thor browser from the same user, and soon after Altoid changed the name to Frosty. And that right there was the crucial part. Alfred knew the significance of that name, since it was the same name of the main computer, Frosty. After consulting with the FBI and putting all the pieces of the puzzle together, at that point, they knew it. Ross Albrecht is the Dread Pirate Roberts. They started 24 hour surveillance over him and soon got a subpoena for his Gmail, which indicated that whenever Dread Pirate Roberts was logged on Silk Road, Ross was logged in his Google account. And the situation was the same when logging out. But despite that, in order to put the final blow, they needed more. They needed the direct evidence of him being logged as a Dread Pirate Roberts on his laptop. And since Ross Albrecht built in the so-called kill switch, in case somebody tries to access his computer, that was very difficult to pull off. So the plan was created.
On October 1st, Special Agent Jared Ariegian met up with a New York-based FBI team led by the agent Christopher Tarbell. The day before, the FBI investigators had observed Albright working at Bello Coffee, a coffee shop close to his house. The Reagan claims that after setting up his laptop beside the cafe and connecting it to the internet via a mobile hotspot, he walked inside to charge the battery. He kept a tight eye on the Dread name in staff chat, which was still active. According to Dariegian, Dread went offline at 2.47 pm, signaling that Albrecht was leaving his home to his preferred public Wi-Fi connection. Dariegian informed the FBI officers before leaving the cafe and finding a bench nearby to sit on. As Dariegian and FBI agent Tom Kernan watched from a close distance, when the signal turned green, he crossed the street and entered Bello Coffee. After leaving the busy cafe for 30 seconds in search of what appeared to be a quieter location, he moved one street north toward the Glen Park Public Library. The crew received an email from Tarbell urging them to make sure to pull a laptop first, then arrest. The Dread Pirate Roberts went online when Ulbricht turned on his computer at the library table at 3.08 pm. Derry again strolled over to the library and climbed one of its staircases to a private location while having his laptop open and signed in to staff chat. Then he started a carefully planned conversation designed to make sure Albrecht logged into a part of Silk Road site designed for moderating comments flagged as spam. The chat went like this. Hey, can you check out one of the flagged messages for me? You did Bitcoin exchange before you worked for me, right? Yes, but only for a little bit. Not any more then. No, I stopped because of reporting requirements. <laughs> Damn regulators, eh? Okay, which post? Ross wasn't aware at the time, but he was surrounded with federal agents who were waiting for a queue. A staged couple fight soon broke out near Albrecht as a distraction, and as soon as he turned away, his laptop was gone. And there it was, Frosty, unlocked, logged into Silk Road as the Dread Pirate Roberts. It's little to say that everybody who knew Ross were in a state of shock after he was arrested and taken away. During his trial in 2015, the prosecution presented a wealth of incriminating material, including online communications, journal entries, and financial transactions, which pointed a vivid picture of Albrecht's involvement in the Silk Road's illegal activities. Albrecht's defense team argued that he had initially created the Silk Road as an experiment in economic theory, and that he handed off control to others, who then framed him as the Dread Pirate Roberts. They contended that Albrecht was a fall guy, taking the blame for others' actions. However, the jury found Albrecht guilty on all charges, including money laundering, computer hacking, conspiracy to traffic narcotics, and even attempted murder for hire. In May 2015, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Let me start by telling you about the whole goes by many names, the, the shoe, segregation, the box. But for me, it's the hole. The hole is the prison within the prison. I once spent four months straight in the hole. Not easy for me to talk about, but I will. The hole can make you or break you. And there was a time when it broke me started with my mind racing out of control. I, I felt like the walls were crushing in on me, like, like I just had to get out of that cell. I started beating the walls and kicking the heavy metal door. Something, something deep inside me cried out for freedom. I couldn't accept where I was or what had happened to me. But Eventually, I realized I had to get a grip. Uh, the stress was destroying me. It may sound strange, but what saved me was gratitude. But what could I be grateful for in that little cell? Well, I had to start small. Um, I had air, right? I had 
water that didn't make me sick. Food came through the slot in the door every day. I knew I wasn't forgotten. I knew someday it would be over and my family would still be there. I forgave all the people involved in putting me in prison. I had to. The, the anger I felt wasn't hurting them, but it was hurting me. So for the sake of my sanity, I, I had to let it go. I had a dream while I was in the hole and in the dream, I was free. I was in a park and I felt this huge relief. I wasn't in prison anymore. But then I got worried. Am I out on bail or something? Or are they going to put me back in? Are they after me right now? And I started trying to get away. And the, the anxiety, it just, it woke me up. And there I was again. In the hole. Ross Ulbricht's case sparked significant controversy and raised crucial questions about internet freedom, government surveillance and the boundaries of law enforcement in the digital realm. Supporters argued that the severity of his sentence was disproportionate to his crimes and that it highlighted potential threats to civil liberties. Others believe that the Silk Road has caused immense harm by enabling drug addiction, violence associated with the drug trade and other criminal activities. The case prompted debates on the need for regulatory frameworks in the evolving landscape of decentralized technologies and the dark web.